Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your Cardboard Concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Today the question I'm answering is what's in the box in regards to this? This is a production copy of Macaron. Not Macaroon, Macaron. A trick-taking card game with a unique twist where one of the macarons is poisoned and you don't want to collect any of them. And there's a neat auction system where you bid for which um, suit you want to be be um, Trump and which you don't. It's a really neat, really solid trick-taking game that I thankfully got to take a, check out a prototype copy of thanks to Sunrise Tomato. Now, this is the production copy. This was successfully kickstarted. This is a game you should be able to buy. Now, in addition to looking at this box, I will also be looking at these expansion material that did come with the Kickstarter version of the game. To my knowledge, this is not going to be available in retail, but I do not know. Um, it did all come loose like this. So I will be showing off these individual components once we get through what's in this box first. So without further ado, let's take a look at what you get in the box from Macaron. All right, here we have the box from Macaron, opening it up for the first time. Uh, nice small box, digest box, supposed to be look like your bought a box of macarons. All right, inside we've got some nice chunky things and both some cards. Oh, these are so nice compared to the uh, the, the base version. Sorry, I, I got to unbox the prototype of this and play it. This is so much nicer. Now, these are your cards for your different suits and your different macaron types that you would have laid out on the board that people are going to bid above and below on. These are really nice with some really nice artwork of uh, various flavors of macaron there. You've got uh, your chocolate and your pistachio there, your strawberry and blueberry here, and so on. So we're going to put those aside. Then we're going to put these out. So components have changed significantly. So here are our bidding tokens. And what would happen is you would have this up and you would place a bid and say, I'm bidding for that I want Strawberry to be uh, the, the Trump suit this round. Or you could be like, no, I don't. And you put it on the bottom. Interestingly, there's some that are better for the top than at the bottom. So we have a number of those all hidden here. So we have all the different bidding tokens. Very clear, easy to read. Um, little tiny on the text, just on the split ones, but not bad at all. From across the table, this should be fine to read. And then we have two ways to match the um, the Trump suits. And then the allergen, because you are making these macarons for the king, and the king is allergic to certain flavors. And that's a trick, uh, the, the suit you don't want to take. So these are to mark the the... Trump suits and the allergen suits. So nice, uh, already punched. That's a nice bonus. I didn't have to punch any of these out. Uh, these are hidden in your hand. You divvy them up at the beginning of the round so you don't know who has which points. Like I said, that's it's kind of an auction mechanic, which is unique to a trick-taking game to me. You're going to watch me fail at putting stuff back in a baggie. I'll get to the cards in a moment because I want to go through the other stuff that's in here. Now we have player markers in three different player colors. It looks like they took some time. Well, four different player colors. One, two, three, five different player colors. Five different player colors. You probably can't see the black very well here. Um, so you have a meeple, a cube, and a circle. Nice, clear, easy to see from across the table components. Uh, these work great as far as I'm concerned for what you need them for. Uh, we then move on to the rules which are presented in uh, two different languages. Yes, so we have we have French and English. We don't need the French currently. Uh, interesting size rule book, but it works. Fold out, lots, full color, lots of examples here. Shows the meeples. What I like to see here is this shows the production components, though obviously these ended up a little taller than they show in the book. But it doesn't, like, these look different than what I had for the prototype, so it was good that they did it. How to set up the game, what tokens to remove, how to play, um, how to do a trick saying the royal suits. Sorry, that's what the Trump is called in this, the royal suits and the allergen. Oh, I'm used to the show peanut for the allergen. Uh, full rules for setup, when Emma leads, when Emma follows, what happens based on the different Trump suits. So it teaches the basics, and then what happens when you win a trick and so on. So the other thing this game includes, too, is bidding on how many tricks you're going to take. 
uh, that's where you're going to use your various tokens here. So one's going to mark your score. One is going to mark how many presents you think you're going to take. Another one's going to do some other bonuses. Um, I'm not sure exactly what they use them for in this very in in the various things, but I got to say this board seems a little small for if people are like multiple people stacking on the same thing. Like the cubes seem like they're double the size they need to be. Uh, there are two sides to the board. This is the easy side. That is a more difficult side of the board for one playing, or perhaps the other way around. Sorry, but there are two difficulty levels. So you are going to bid on like how many tricks you're going to take. If you take three or two, you're going to get this bonus at the bottom. Whereas on this side, you go here, and if you get it, you get two points. But if you fail, you lose points. So I have, sorry, this, yeah, I can't remember which side's easier. So that's what that's for. And that's it for the main components, except for the cards. Pretty much what I'd expect from a card game. Nice chunky pieces, though. The bo either the board seems small, which, you know what, it's size to fit the box, so fair. Or these seem a little larger than they need to be. These could be a little tinier. Once I actually play the game, then I'll let you know. So then we have the cards and macarons. So there were different backs available. I went for the tree style back. There is a different back that um, shows rolls of macarons inside. So there were two options. I chose the tree options. Oh, stuff is falling off my table. So then we have the various tricks. So we have the almond trick, the two, and then some of these cards have special abilities. So like the one, if you use it to take a trick, counts as three. Uh, the two can't be the allergen, doesn't count for it. Like if you take a two with an allergen trick, it doesn't matter and so on. So they go all the way up to one to seven with the one and two having special abilities. Um, there's lots of clear things to show icons as well. So if you have colorblind friendliness or not, you could have the word. You have the color of the card, you have the number, and then you also have a symbol. And then which of the two, which of the soup boards it's from. So those are the A boards, the B boards. You have strawberry, blueberry, green tea, Earl Grey, and chocolate. Those are your macaron flavors. Now, chocolate is special and does go up to 10. So those are the cards. You're going to shuffle these up. You're going to play a trick-taking game. In general, the highest number wins the trick, but then there's Trump, and then there's the Allergen, where you don't want the Allergen, whereas your Trump can steal this trick. Pretty much it. Really solid trick-taking game that I really enjoy. Uh, my mother-in-law loves this game. She actually has my prototype copy now and has kept it because she liked the game so much. Box is sufficient. Um, some baggies to hold some of the components. I like that I didn't have to punch anything. Uh, cards are going to slide around, though, so that's a little disappointing. I'm probably going to grab a baggie to put the cards in so they don't slide around too much. So that is everything you get in the base box for Macaron. Now, this was a Kickstarter, and with the Kickstarter, there were some other exclusives called the Macaron Expansions, which I have here. Now, these were not part of the prototype, so I have no idea what these do, to be honest, but you have a bunch of standalone ones, including the Baristo, Emma, the Jester, and then on the back we have... The King's Orders, Noble, Sunset, and Zero. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven expansions come with this. Um, I don't know what comes with what bit, but like I love this like teacup me meeple. So we have we have our, our, our teacup meeple because who wants a macaron without your coffee, right? So we have a little tea or coffee cup meeple. Then this one is, and they stuck to the same card backs, which is always nice. And take a quick look at this little pile. So these are the noble cards. Switcheroo, after the round setup, all players pass their entire hand to the pass to the left. So after you bid, you're going to pass on them. So these are uh, low is high, a zero is higher than a one. So a bunch of different cards here, and then some other artwork. On the back of the card, that's cute. A, a nice piece of tree artwork. So those are the noble cards. Obviously, I had changes to the rules. Um, the one thing that's interesting is I said zero is high. Well, zero cards weren't in the deck. I do see zero cards right here. So the addition of a zero card in each suit, it looks like. Which looks like they do something. Wow, these are not easy to get out of this package. Once these are out, they're not going back in. So yes, we have a zero. And an eight. Oh, these are mixed. That's really cool. So you have an almond pistachio, almond dural gray. So they're eights, but they're mixes of the flavors. 
That's neat. That's interesting. I, I don't know the rules for using with that, but that looks like a cool addition to the game. You know what? I give up. I'm not even going to try to put these back in the baggies. We're just going to put them aside. Then we have the King's Orders. So the King's Orders... Say uniformity, the player who has at least two tricks and the fewest flavors of macarons and their allergen-free tricks will get two victory points. The player who has the most tricks that contain at least three different flavors gets extra points. So various extra points you can get for completing the king's orders. They each have their own name. That's cool. Then we have the barista expansion. Um, oh, so it changes the bets. So it changes the different bets you're going to play. So the eight plus bets are actually gain three points and lose three, whereas all the rest are gain one, lose two. Yeah, so all of these modify the bets. So the barista modify the betting system where you're betting on how many tricks you can take. So I'll just hold one of those up so you can kind of see it. What would be really nice is if this fits on the board, which we're going to try real quick. Let's try Oh, but the board's on the bottom. No, unfortunately. Like, you could put it over top. I was actually hoping that would, like, overlay in a way that you'd have the new modifiers. Oh, well. Worth a shot. Missed opportunity. Then we have the Emma cards. Emma, from what I understand, is for playing solo. So Emma wins all ties. When Emma leads a three or four, treat it as a six, and so on. So these are some solo variants. So you can play against Emma. Now, what I am going to do is put all of these together into this baggie, because it looks big enough to hold all these. So there you have the Kickstarter expansions for Macaron, a unique auction betting trick-taking game that I really enjoy. Looking forward to checking out these expansions. What I'm going to really appreciate is when I figure out how to fold this. Look at this. Look at, please. All fits in the base box. Thank you. Appreciate that. So there you have what you get in the box for Macaron, a trick-taking card game from Sunrise Tornado Games, a game I really enjoyed playing the prototype of that I can't wait to try the, the full game. Production quality here is excellent. Uh, pretty much what I expected and better in some ways. I do like the thick tiles. I appreciate not having to punch anything. My only potential concern is that the player pieces seem awfully large compared to the central player board. Now, in a way, that may be great for being able to see it. I haven't played the game to know for sure, but it just seems like they're double the size they need to be to fit onto that player board. I love the fact that there are a ton of little expansions that you can add or remove from the game. They look really neat. That's something I never got to experience before. So that'll make the game seem fresh and new to me, even though I got to play the original prototype. Really looking forward to checking out Macaron. If you're into trick-taking games, I do suggest checking this one out. Thank you for joining me for this unboxing video. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop. You can find me all over the internet as Tabletop Bellhop, one word, and at the webpage, tabletopbellhop.com, where you'll find all kinds of awesome gaming content. If you like what you saw here and like what you see on the website and would like to help support us continuing to make gaming-related content, please consider tipping your bellhop at patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop. That's it for me today. Last unboxing video of the day. I'm about to take a break and go play some games. Good night and game on.